I am uh, Chris Bencher um, from Applied Materials, work in the CTO group. And my involvement with SPIE started back in 2007 when uh, we started to publish work on our sidewall spacer double patterning flows. Um, in fact, I think in retrospect, the sidewall spacer double patterning has really been very enabling for, for the industry. Uh, back in 2007, we showed that you could print 32 nanometer. And then the year after that at SPIE, we showed a 22. And then the year after that, we showed that it could not only do NAND, but it could do DRAM and logic. And then the year after that, we showed that it could do random logic. And so if SPIE knows me for anything, hopefully it is for all of those years uh, kind of beating the drum and carrying the flag uh, for SADP, which is the sidewall spacer double patterning process flow. I think um, it, it single-handedly has really, I mean, I'm not the only contributor in that, but you know, the entire industry worked together on sidewall spacer double patterning. But we were able to take immersion from, from 40 nanometers you know, very rapidly down to 20 nanometers, and that has really uh, driven NAND scaling and, uh, and allowed us um, you know, to, to scale NAND for five, five technology nodes. Uh, now, um, the DRAM and the logic chips are kind of catching up to the NAND pitch, and they're starting to uh, adopt those sidewall spacer double patterning flows also. When I first started working on the spacer double patterning, um, it was pretty clear that NAND was very interested in that. And here at the conference, you know, you were having papers from uh, Hynix was actually one of the one of the companies that published the most on SADP back in 2006 and 7 and 8 you know, was Hynix. Um, I think in retrospect, everyone was working on it, but just Hynix ended up publishing a, a, a lot. You know, and so there was a, a strong belief that the spacer double patterning um, would, would take off in NAND. But there were a lot of skeptics about how it would apply to DRAM and how it would apply to logic. Um, but uh, there were several several people, and uh, I was kind of one of one of them that just realized if the, you could make the mandrel a complex shape, and then the spacer would become a complex shape, and then your um, your cut mask would have to come in and be a complex shape, and you can actually have quite. Uh, quite complicated final designs that become of that. But it's very difficult to visualize and, and solve that with the, the human mind. Um, it requires you to have an EDA tool. Um, and so uh, in 2007, uh, we had a joint development program with a major EDA vendor. Uh, we taught them everything that we knew about spacer double patterning. They worked on the electronic decomposition. Uh, and we even would run wafers in the fab, validating that their decomposition worked on, uh, on wafer. <clears throat> and uh, eventually we end up publishing a, a joint paper with uh, Cadence and Global Foundries, you know, showing that in fact you can do very, very complicated patterns, but you do need a, a, a computerized you know, electronic decomposition tool to do that for you. Um, and then also there will be some conflicts with the, uh, with the design. But once you have the EDA tool, you can have the conversations with the designer which patterns are not really working and then discuss the value of those patterns and whether you should get rid of them or whether you should adapt to the patterning uh, to do them. When we talk about the patterning challenges, that actually NAND has been okay uh, DRAM is not too bad. For people in logic who have gone with these gridded design rules uh, is they have pretty scalable designs for a few more nodes. Uh, and for the people who have decided to stay completely freeform and want uh, you know, two-dimensional uh, layers, you know, all CDs, all pitches um, available all the time, is they are the community that is really uh, stuck in a position that's very difficult to scale moving forward. So I think that's why that you kind of have <clears throat> uh, the patterning community um, has kind of diverged and you have some people uh, following EUV 
because it can do uh, all of the random layouts and designs very well. And you have others who are happily, merrily going down multiple patterning, um, which actually works quite well for, for regular layouts like memories and logic with gridded design rules. In semiconductor space, in order to, to implement change, that you have many, many different kinds of boundary conditions. You have to solve the problem, you know, with like on, on a six dimensional um, equation, right? It has to work for the designer, it has to work on cost, it has to uh, work with the materials, uh, uh, it has to be on time, um, it has to be free of defect uh, defects. Uh, so, in many of the new uh, litho schemes, schemes we want to bring to market require a new mask. And so you need a whole new mask uh, ecosystem. So the problem is heavily constrained you know, by you know, six or 10 or 12 different, different variables. So it's very hard to have a simultaneous a solution that works for the business model, works for the device, works for the timing, works for the uh, companies that will have to collaborate to make it happen. It's very hard. But I think where you see the new technologies being, being implemented is maybe in other industries that are less constrained, like bit pattern media. So bit pattern media is able to adopt directed self-assembly uh, faster than anyone else because they're more defect tolerant. Also they're going to implement directed self-assembly only in making a mask, not in fabricating all of the individual disks. So uh, they, their industry was still constrained, but maybe constrained by three or four variables instead of six or 12. Um, also, you see nano imprint uh, doing well for wire grid polarizers, right? So wire grid polarizers is a completely different market, um, completely different defectivity scenario, um, but it still, it adds enough value to the display uh, that we, we can, that the industry can take on, you know, nano imprint for wire grid polarizers. <clears throat> so yeah, I think what you see is um, in some of our adjacent lithography uh, application spaces like bit patterned media, wire grid polarizers, uh, that in these areas that are less constrained are more able to adopt change.